we're in Hood River at Not Another Hat with Sarah to talk about this yarn store on the slow crawl. And we've decided that we're both immunized. Yes. So we're going to take our masks off, Aww. which is actually totally legal now, I think, as I, I understand. Well, I don't know. I think we have to share documents. Here's mine. Here's mine. <laughs> I carry, I carry. I, I do carry too. my documents with me all I the time. <laughs> but we're honorable yes, leaders. Yes. So we're all good. Yes. All right. So I've got the questions ready for you. Are you ready to go? Sure. All right. So we're, what prompted you to open this store? Uh, so I was a stay at home mom with a young toddler and very much looking for um, something to do, like some work to do that was flexible and would allow me to be at home. So I had this great scheme, this is back in uh, 2000, late 2003, early 2004, that I would open an online yarn store and sell yarn out of my home basically, but through a website. And back then, which <laughs> seems like it's not that long ago, but it was a long time ago in the We're scope in of technology, yeah. that um, yarn stores online only were just barely coming to be and a lot of the vendors I wanted to carry including some of our very big vendors today didn't permit someone to only have oh, a, wow. a website you, because they thought they would brick and mortar yeah they, they thought you'd undercut on pricing and put people out of business and so my big plan <laughs> to have a work from home business snowballed within months to opening a brick and mortar store oh so it was very hard to just pull that off yeah yeah, wow. and, there and are it, so many now. it involved a move, like a 300 mile move too. <laughs> oh, you moved here to do it. Yeah, so uh, my husband and I both grew up in this area yeah. and we were living in Eastern Washington and so when it became clear that the website idea wasn't actually going to work, we thought this would be a really great way to make moving back to where we grew up happen. Oh wow. So, and yeah. then what, he switched to jobs or oh, he switched gosh. to working from home? Or? He went through a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but he is he has landed where he is you happy. know is happy and should be and oh that's awesome yeah all right so how has the pandemic impacted your business and what have you done well I'm almost result? afraid to talk about that because um, I don't want to uh, jinx anything and there's no, no. wood near us to knock on but um, floor, to knock on floor. my head <laughs> floor wooden floor it was yeah. it was remarkably um, good for us like we really connected with our community. I had already established a routine of going live on my Facebook page every week and I, I ramped that up just to keep in touch with people while we were closed and we just got really inventive. We just tried to think of new ways to sell the inventory we had because there was a great good stretch where you weren't getting any inventory because no. people, the vendors were closed and yeah. um, or to come up with just any, any idea, just yeah. come up with any idea. and. Our community really came through for us, and and we we grew a little bit in 2020. Wow. So it was all things aside. If you have to find the silver linings of dealing with that whole year, yeah, there there were some for us, yeah. and that was definitely our customers. Great. So you managed to stay connected to the yeah. community. Yeah, yeah. They were incredibly supportive. That's cool. Incredibly supportive. All right. What can we get here that we can't get anywhere else? Okay, I'm <laughs> I'm going to talk about this, and it's going to probably make people mad because by the time this video plays, they won't be able to get it. Uh oh, it's going to be gone. Yeah. So what we have here that is so special are Cardi Bell bags, and this is our one of our local knitters, and she makes the most beautiful bags, and she makes different ones every time she brings us a batch. We don't order from her; we take what she gives, gives us. You. Yeah. And every time she brings them in. Um, we show them off on our weekly video and then they're gone later that day. Oh, and, wow. But they're so fantastic and they're so well made. This one right here is a caddy and um, it's got outside pockets. It's got this nice big inside cavity that holds like 300 gram cakes. Oh, and it's nice. So, depth. yeah, it's really and nice it's really. to work out. Yeah, and you, exactly. And it stands up. You set it down next to you and you can knit right out of it. And so, so screen? She yeah. still screens? No, she just loves to buy fabric. <laughs> oh, so she's found that. Wow. Nice. Yeah, isn't that a cute fabric? It's adorable fabric. So, Cardi Bell bags, there, we have every different size and style at various times. So, you know, watch so they the may, website. There may be some, but. There will always but probably it will be, be different. some, but it'll be different. And these come, they come and go. Like, she rotates every few months. She'll bring something back that was really popular before. But they just don't last very long. Yeah. But they are great. Good Sweet. price point too on them. And it's it's a consignment item, so she's getting most of the sale. Yeah, so great to support. One might disappear before I leave. Look. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the best part about this whole thing is I'm like bringing, I'm carting stuff home. <laughs> 
you're doing your own personal crawl. <laughs> oh yes, I, in fact, I slipped yesterday because I I did I do a lot I don't I don't do a live stream I do a video every day and and I says yeah and while I was crawling I'm like oh well not really my eight crawl stores that I went to last weekend because I did Seattle. Last That's a pretty week. good gig. Oh, it's it's been fun. It's been fun. Yes. So what's your favorite fiber? All right, it's wool. I wool. So this is really anticlimactic. I know. Crunchy, soft. I like. All, all of it. All of it. Give me all of the wool all of the time. So I wandered around trying to figure out like what would be there my favorite. No I one. can't play favorites. I'm just like that mom, you know, that can't whatever the wants favorite to. But I <laughs> I do have a fondness in my heart for the Linares line. And some people might know them as Brenda. They've um, they've rebranded, so their name is now Linares. Mm -hmm. But they have um, a mill in Uruguay. And all of their bases come out of that mill, and they come up to the mill owner's son and his wife in San Diego, and then they're dying there in San oh, wow. Diego. And they're doing some really fun stuff. Um, they're experimenting with different plies. So, like we in this year, we've got three plies going one direction and one ply going in the opposite direction. So you get a little extra strength in the yarn that normally people would get from, like, say, nylon. Yeah. But it's it's, but all, it's all wool. yeah. And they're doing breed stuff. Like this is a 50 pole worth 50 Cordale. Oh, wow. And they're doing they're hand dyeing non superwash, which is really Sorry. really cool. Yes, there's not a lot of um, no. hand dyed non superwash yarns out there, so we're having some fun with Brenda Sweet. or Linares yarns. Linares yeah. yarns, yeah. Sweet, yeah. So, do people make garments out of it? Yeah, that's mostly what we've seen um, is sweater knitting out of it. Yeah. Uh, well, the fingering weight definitely some shawls. Okay. Um, but Nobody's yeah. tried socks. Not his, yet. Historically. That's, well, and our is, socks were 100% wool, and, and that is the, the, the purpose of their fourth well, special yeah. fourth ply is that people would find their socks for socks. So yes, it'll be yes. interesting to see how they. Yeah, I've always debated doing it, and then you know you never do. You should, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the fear of the washing machine. <laughs> um, what always flies off the shelf? What thing always flies off? The Whatever we're talking about that week. Okay. So we just we are a real sweater focused shop. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just because. Jill, who's kind of puttering about here, she's my manager, and I are just so obsessively sweater knitters, so that just leaks out into everything that we do. But um, so we are frequently on some mode, like either a knit along or a new book has come out or something where we're just all about that thing, and then it just it just trickles out, and suddenly everyone's knitting that sweater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite book? So on that note, I think it. It would have to be um, Marie Green's Seamless Knit Sweaters in two weeks. So I didn't have a copy. We're getting our reorder oh, you're right waiting. now. Yes, we're sold out currently. But um, we're, we're big Marie Green fans. She's a friend of the store. And Jill and I both knit samples for the book. So we're a little biased. But I've already knit, in addition to the samples I made for Marie, I've already knit three sweaters out of that book myself. I love how they fit. I love the ways that she... Uh, encourages knitters to make a pattern their own and not be afraid to do the things you need to do to make it fit you, right? So they're chock full of really good info, they're not just patterns. And so yeah, I think that's probably, it's been out for a couple years now, it's still my favorite book. Still, yeah. Um, what's your favorite gadget? Okay, grab to that. I do have that to show. I don't know if this counts as a gadget, but yes, I am obsessed a gadget. with these That's flight of stitch markers for Cocoa Knits. So you get all these different style of markers. These are my favorite. The triangles. They're hands down um, the easiest I find to use if you can get them out of the box. <laughs> They're, um, because of the way that one point's always sticking up, it's just so easy to grab that with your needle when you okay. need to slip it to the other side. Yeah. And they're in adorable yeah. colors. Yeah. And metal, and so they're magnetic. So if you have any um, tool catchers. Drop them. Yep. Yeah, they're easy to grab. So um, I've gone through several boxes of well, these. There's never enough stitch markers, <laughs> is there ever, ever. Yeah. There's never enough. So definitely Alrighty. love these. And then let's talk about your pattern for the store. Featured by the slow Snail Trail. Snail Trail. You like that name? Yeah, I do like that name. <laughs> that was actually, um, I had a little naming contest with some of our core regulars, and one of our regulars came up with that. Snail Trail. Like, slow, slow crawl, Snail Trail. That's right. And it's got this little stripe, so. It does, yeah. This is the. Um, oh, so you've got like a garter stripe. Yeah, the, the Snail Trail shawl. And I'm wearing the one that's in the pictures. The this was the samples, but Jill made up another one in another color because there are just so many different colorways you can come up with. Yeah. 
Um, and it's a so summer show yeah. because these are well, two yeah, summer so yarns from Barocco, like, so um, Summer Sesame really and then good. Zinnia. So, so like, cotton and cotton linen blends. Um, really great. Almost Size 7 needle goes really fast. Yeah. So endless color combinations that you can do. And, you know, a fun, funny name. Yeah, do you start at the small end and then work up? Yeah, so you start here and then you just do an increase. Yep, and then finish off with a little garter border in your contrast color. So. Yeah, Alrighty. and I am actually planning, I was just so behind, <laughs> so behind, so I usually do a crochet pattern every, um, or at least I have for the last two, Yeah. and I didn't get it done, but I have a good customer who's a crocheter, she's kind of helping, pushing me along, and I think what I'm going to do is just recreate this with some really basic crochet. double crochet, yeah, exactly, so then it's a similar looking shawl, and it'll be a crochet option, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks. All right, so if you come in for the crawl, yeah. say crochet. Right. And maybe there will be a crochet ready to go, right? Exactly. Okay. All right, as you come on in the store, we have the store arranged by weight, and the fingering actually starts in the corner with the lace back behind it. We're, we're here in the sport weight area. So right here we have all of our sport weight. We have a range of all kinds of fibers, and over here we have our samples. We sell a lot of samples here because we're in a bit of a tourist destination and a lot of times people wander in and they're not knitters and then they're confused but then they can go and buy a shawl or a cowl or even a sweater and it's amazing how many times they want to buy something that's finished. Um, let's see, we'll go this direction. This is the beginning of our DK area and this is uh, mostly plant and plant blends of DK weight yarn and our DK curves right on around the corner and goes all the way down to the end of the wall as you can probably tell it's the most inventory heavy part of our store so we do a lot of dk yarn knitting in general so it's kind of that happy medium it's not too small it's not too big and as we continue on in here this whole section of the store all the way to the back is our worsted probably second runner up to the DK in terms of the quantity that we have and then we have a little bit of bulky because we're in a little off season for bulky knitting and then over here we have fingering so this is technically where the circle would start and our super chunky is right over there also really low in inventory right now because the season and currently we have a fun little display here We've got an upcoming blog post where Jill demonstrates the Coco Knits blocking method and the sweater care kit. And it's a really great helpful video. It's on our YouTube channel. And so these are all our Coco Knits tools all in one place so everyone can, can see what, what they offer oh, and what they get in one of the blocking kits. And they're so irresistible with their cute little packaging. Oh,